Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY22 earnings conference call of VSC Tillers Tractors Limited, hosted by Badliwala and Karani Securities India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anamala Jairaj from Batliwala and Karani Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Margaret. Welcome to VSC Pillar Practice Limited, 3 k fi 22 post Postal Conference Call. From VSC Pillar Practice Limited Management, we have with us today Mr. VT Ravindra, Managing Director, Mr. Anthony Sirkara, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Pankaj Kempa, uh, Chief Financial Officer. I will now hand over the call to the management for the open webinar to be followed by question and answer session. Over to you, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, happy to be here to share with you three FY22 results with all of you. Uh, the company achieved a quarterly turnover of 208.44 crores in Q3 of FY22. That is a growth of 2.75% year on year. The overall EBITDA percentage is 16.62% compared to 20.47% previous year. The reduction in EBITDA is mainly due to the reduction in other income. The operational EBITDA is at 14.51% compared to 14.71% the previous year. The PAT is at 21.05 crore, previous year 30.83 crore, down by 31.72%. Again, this is mainly due to the uh, other income and increase in depreciation. Coming to the nine-month results, April to December, the company achieved a turnover of 635.5 crores. Year to date, December 21, the growth is at 11.6%. Overall EBITDA percentage is at 18.35% compared to 19.25% previous year. The reduction in EBITDA again is due to the reduction in other income. The operational EBITDA percentage increased to 14.80% compared to 14.74%. And the profit after tax is 77.21 crore against previous year of 77.84 crore. Now coming to quarter three volumes on power tillers. Power tillers in quarter three F22, we have done 7139 power tillers against the previous year quarter three number of 6734 and tractors 2043 against previous year of 2433. This is uh, mainly on the volume and uh, financials. And with these opening remarks, uh, we could go on to the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, please press star and one at this time. The first question is from the line of Krupa Shankar NJ from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon. A uh, couple of questions from my side. Uh, uh, so, what would be uh, your sense on the medium-term demand outlook uh, for power tillers and tractors? And uh, if at all, can you uh, share your guidance uh, for FI22 and 23? Yeah, the medium-term outlook looks positive for power tillers, uh, especially the short term. Uh, medium term is a little difficult to predict. However, the monsoon prediction is good for the next uh, monsoon as well. So that augurs well for the industry. So overall, it looks positive for power tiller. Uh, the, even for the tractors, uh, it looks positive. However, currently, uh, there is a slowdown in the tractor sale. Primarily, 
there was a cash flow delay into the farmers hands which affected the uh, tractor industry majorly but however given the reservoir water levels the crop prices and the cash flow now happening into the farmers hands uh, it again looks positive in the short and medium term right um, so any any major update on the subsidy allocation in the major uh, part of the states uh, yeah in this quarter 4 we are seeing some subsidy allocation happening from the northeast uh, in uh, tamil nadu in karnataka and in uh, maharashtra right sir. right uh, uh, and second question from my side that uh, your uh, can you share the revenue breakdown between the power tellers and tractors for the quarter what breakdown The the revenue, revenues for, for power tillers and tractors. Yeah, just a second. For quarter three, uh, just a second. Quarter three, uh, power tillers was 105 crores, and tractors were 80 crores. Got it, sir. So thank you. I'll get back with you. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Devanshu Sampat from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello sir. Good afternoon. Uh, so two broad questions from my side. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, two things. One is uh, recently uh, uh, the management of Mahindra and Mahindra spoke about launching. code under the swaraj brand right and uh, there was a very distinct comment uh, made by the management where they said they are targeting uh, and they are confident of it replacing tillers so what are your thoughts on this one secondly if you can explain what kind of how is the pricing and the subsidy environment uh, uh, situation different for this for a code and will, it, will that uh, be something to that can you know uh, will that be applicable to code as well if you have any idea about that and if this does turn out to be a threat over time uh, will this require us to be more aggressive in terms of power readers and these kind of things uh, just your thoughts yeah so uh, we have seen code and uh, right now it is not eligible under any such city because that is a Uh, completely new segment probably the government will have to come out with a uh, testing regulations and standards for that just like that happened to the quadri cycle if you if you recall yes yes so i that is something that will have to evolve right now subsidy is not there however uh, on closer look we see limited applications of that machine uh, which is again uh you know one thing in terms of traction in terms of all that but yes there are certain row crops where it could be applicable but we are not seeing any big movements they have uh, uh, you know we have seen it in the market there is no big shift happening there is good demand for power tillers even now and uh, the power tiller business continues to grow however i would say innovation will keep happening and we will also be not far behind in terms of uh, uh bringing innovations in the market this this year in fact we have been awarded by cii as one of the most 25 innovative companies in the country wherein we launched multiple models with various innovations which enables the small and marginal farmer so while we keep a watch on what is happening with the uh, code uh, one thing is for sure that vnst will not be far behind in terms of innovations okay okay and uh, uh so also there was this press release that, uh, that the company uh, put out a few weeks ago regarding this 1 rupee payment for brush cutters now uh, of, uh, of course this is uh, uh, something that i presume that you would also be looking at uh, you know uh, making this facility available for financing for, for one product and then eventually taking it to the other products uh, that are out there so uh, can you give a little sense on whether the tie ups are specific to that or can it be uh, you know if you can share more details in terms of how many people we tied up with and and you know how many uh, where is this is it financing 
facility available at all your outlets and is it for all products if you can throw some light on that please yeah so this 1 rupee particular uh, scheme was launched only for brush cutters and uh, there has been good response in the market for that what we have seen is customers coming with kisan credit card and actually buying the brush cutter and converting the balance to uh, emi uh, brush cutter costs typically anywhere between 17000 rupees to uh, 28000 rupees so depending on which which capacity and what he is buying so that this this whole scheme is enabling those farmers to actually buy it easily through an emi just like you and me would go to a uh, consumer durable store and buy a tv using easy finance availability so that is what we wanted to emulate for the rural consumers in the members of the management we cannot hear you at the moment members of the management uh, please confirm yeah we we can hear you okay. hello we can hear you now so we lost you there for a while yeah i, I so i will repeat the whole thing again if uh, all of you can hear me can you just confirm if you can hear me yes, yes sir yes, i can, we can hear you now thank you yeah, so i will repeat what uh, i said just like the consumer finance available for durables like tv and fridge and all that hello can you hear me yes yes sir, yes, sir. yeah so the same thing we are uh, enabling for the small farm missionary customers we have got good response on the 1 rupee scheme wherein the farmer comes in with the kisan credit card and buys the uh, makes the down payment of 1 rupee and rest he converts it into an emi so the same uh, methodology of course not the 1 rupee but different schemes we are also launch for power tillers wherein the down payment is 4000 rupees and rest of it is converted into emi is for the farmer to pay so that is also yielding a good result the other thing which the company is doing is creating digital payment ability in all our dealerships we have reached about 85 dealerships now where paytm machines have been installed we are taking it up to 300 400 dealership within the next 2 months wherein the whole digital abhiyan of the government where the farmer is using the kisan credit card which will also i mean this facility will also enable him to buy missionary now which he was not able to do until now uh, so with this initiatives uh, we are able to get good uh, response from the consumers i hope i have answered your question yes sir so so just to clarify um, so basically what you say is financing cap financing uh, so uh, availability will be there at all your outlets maybe in a, in a quarter or two right not only for brush cutters but for all products uh, essential all products. exactly yes okay great great uh, so yeah that's it from my side for now i will get back in the queue for more questions thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question at this time the next question is from the line of marshall an individual investor please go ahead yeah hi uh, this my question is that, uh, like considering this uh, uh, like this uh, in sir uh, considering sir in the raw material cost uh, how are you placed in terms of the steel pack in case and also things so what do you think that in terms of margin uh, during the q4 uh, like uh, what's your sort of guidance that is compared to quarter 3 number 1 this first person second person that how do you see this is sale of tiller and tractor during the q4 as compared to q3 in terms of numbers yeah so uh you know, the commodity inflation continues to be an issue there is there is definitely pressure in terms of uh, costs that is being created through the commodity inflation however the company has been able to manage the cost very efficiently uh, both the operational costs and the various efficiencies that we have been talking about since the last few quarters that is yielding as a result that is the reason why our operational ebitda has not gone down so it is it is being maintained and uh, on a nine month basis we have also seen slight growth and going into quarter four i think we will be able to manage our costs uh, better some of the accrual of all the projects that we have been doing will continue to flow in in quarter four and in the coming quarters as well so we should be able to manage our margins in the range that we are 
currently uh, talking about which is 12% to 14% which we have sustained and I think we will continue to sustain. And what about the numbers of like projected numbers of sales for the uh, dealers and the tractor considering that it's year ending also much better so every company tries to push more in the market to book more sales. So what do you think in terms of how many we saw, how many dealers we saw, how many tractors we sold in Q3 and what's your target to sell in the Q4? Yeah, uh, I just uh, I just read out the Q3 numbers. Uh, uh, so we have sold uh, 7,139 uh, tillers in Q3 and uh, 2,043 tractors in Q3. Uh, Q4 we should be better. We don't give any uh, number, forward looking numbers uh, in our calls. But we think it will be, it is going to be positive. Very good. And so last thing that, uh, did you also take some price increase because steel was very high and the power tool was also getting higher. So what about price increase? Yes, we are looking at a price increase and uh, we have taken that in quarter four. Ah, okay. So, so, so you didn't take any price increase in Q3? Q3, no. Oh, Q3, oh okay. Sorry, oh, nice. okay. Q3 we took in October. Okay, okay, okay. And then, now, and then again, you're planning to. So, I think you're planning to take in the, so you are, you are planning to have another price hike during this quarter. Yeah, see, uh, most of the industry has already done the price increase in December. We are uh, looking at doing the price increase in quarter four, yes. Okay, okay. So, one you did in, uh, oh, yeah, effective from November, second price increase you are, you, you, are, you are targeting to do during this quarter. Yeah, correct. Okay. So oh, nice of you, sir. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Anand Srinivasan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Sir, how is the expansion in higher HP tractor going on? In uh, any status, what is the current status? Yeah, the higher expansion, I mean, the higher as per tractor expansion is going as per plan. We shifted to Hosur in the beginning of this year. So the entire production capacity is completely set up for higher speed tractors. We have also taken steps to grow into the higher speed markets this year. So we are making beginnings in those markets in like UP, MP and Rajasthan. We are getting very good response. We should be able to do 1000 uh, plus numbers in uh, this financial year, hopefully in the higher HP segment. And going forward, we should be able to grow it further in the coming years. Great to know, sir. Uh, sir, on the implement side, how is the, what is the current status? And also on the precision uh, uh, to, uh, precision implement side, we are, talk yeah. we are talking about expanding on those lines. So any light so on that side? Yes, precision implement division is something we have started manufacturing of rotavators in Mysore. The business team is uh, also being put in place. We have seen uh, early beginnings of the, the revenue flowing in, but uh, I think in the coming years it will scale up further. Okay, and sir, what is the current inventory status, sir? Uh, is it normal lines or how? Yeah, in, in normal lines, of course, in quarter three, we had a slightly uh, higher inventory uh, of about 133 crores, but we should, uh, I mean, it is, it is in line with our plans to build inventory for the season, uh, considering January also is Pongal and harvest season and uh, an upward take in the industry, it's as per plan, and uh, things would be normal, uh, as you said. Great. I, I'll fall back in case. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Sonal Gupta from l and Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon and thanks for taking my question, sir. Uh, sorry, I joined a call a little late. Could you repeat the uh, revenue numbers for tiller tractor and parts for this quarter? Yeah, just a second. Uh, for quarter three, uh, the company revenue was two zero. I did you get the company revenues, right? You just wanted the tiller and uh, tractor revenue. Yes. Okay, the uh, tiller revenue is about hundred and five crores, and uh, tractor revenue is at about eighty crores. Eighty crores and parts. 
parts is about 22 crores okay same as asko so so uh, just on the carrying on with the previous question on higher hp uh tractors I, i was just trying to understand like this year uh, we have also along with the industry seen a sharp decline in tractor volumes despite yeah. the fact that you you launched a new product range as well and our overall base is also relatively small so could you um, i mean like uh, shed some light on that like like you mentioned that you were going to do like almost 1000 units to for, for higher hp tractors So the underlying uh, lower HP tractors are seeing a very sharp decline. Uh, I mean, overall, how do you see this thing? I mean, is there some? Uh, what are the factors here? Yeah. So the uh, higher HP tractors, there is not going to be any decline. Uh, this year, the the we have set up the operation in Hosur, and it has begun. And as we move forward, we will you will see the growth in the volumes in the higher HP as production and product stabilizes. so uh, apart from that the combat tractor segment is predominantly for us being sold in uh, gujarat and maharashtra karnataka so what has happened this year the industry fall has been uh, at a certain level for a few uh, i mean last few months however the drop has been uh, larger in states like gujarat where the larger number of combat tractor segment is sold so that has impacted our combat tractor segment sale and that is why you see a dip in volumes in the tractors and secondly as i said before uh, we go only by consumption and uh, the entire cycle is built on consumption and the billing happens on consumption only so it is very directly proportional to the demand in the market right now so these are the two reasons so we don't build any inventory in terms of uh, uh, the channel inventory so these are the two uh, uh, factors by which you see a decline in compact tractors the higher hp tractors uh, is continuing to grow although at a small percentage and going forward i think things will look better because gujarat and uh, maharashtra uh, water levels and uh, pricing for the crop producers are looking good <coughs> got it sir so but uh, overall do you see i mean like we clearly we are hearing uh, a lot of uh, news flow saying rural stress uh, i mean even some of the larger tractor competitors have sort of commented uh, so do you think that the industry will continue to face pressure even in fy23 or do you think that uh, we have largely seen the worst of the impact see the uh, the pressure is seen against a very large base in the previous financial year however you look at uh, in terms of where the industry will end up this year uh, will be close to 900000 so it, it it is actually uh, you know the large base of the previous financial year which we are comparing against and uh, then we are uh, you know we are looking at the uh, you know the growth that is being seen however what i see is in the coming uh, near term or the medium term going into the kari season i see things would good look good the reason being one is uh, the water levels are good the crop planting is good and the prediction on the monsoon is also good so just recently few days back the prediction on monsoon also has come which is uh, being predicted to be normal so with all these put together it, it looks good for the coming season as well god and <clears throat> sorry sir and could you share some where where are you in terms of a uh, financing uh, numbers sorry uh, in in terms of like uh, like you mentioned you have launched the vmi scheme so how is the share of financing moved uh, could you talk about like uh, maybe was the last year share of financing as over the last uh, few uh, quarters we have been focusing on it about 6 to 7 quarters what uh, we have done is from zero financing happening in uh, tillers currently we are at about uh, 3.5% so earlier zero retail finance used to happen it uh, has gone up to 3.5 to 4% our immediate target is to take it to at least 10% and the next year take it to at least 20% so in the latest quarter we are at 3.5 is it yeah, yeah. and uh, and uh, what would be the case for you in the tractor side tractor side is predominantly finance so there is no question of no finance availability in that segment 
forward, sir. And, and just lastly, I, I mean, in terms of the tailor volumes, uh, could you tell us what share of uh, would be B two B in terms of your volume? Uh, tailor volume B two B is about fifteen hundred numbers so far this financial year. Okay, got it. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arpit Shah from Care Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, very good afternoon, and uh, thank you for giving me a chance. Uh, sir, what are your pl pipeline for next year launches in uh, tractors and in tillers for any other farm equipment that we want to launch? Yeah, the new products that we will be launching in the coming uh, months, we are launching a couple of products in the compact tractor segment, uh, which will be uh, advanced products uh, in terms of ergonomics, in terms of the uh, hydraulics in the compact tractor segment. Also, in the coming financial year, we will be launching the VST Zitor range of tractors in the high HP segment. Uh, in the small farm equipment uh, sector, we will be launching a, a range of uh, handheld machines like uh, chain saws, which we will be looking at. Okay, so these are in coming few months only? Or yes, coming few months only. VST Zitor launch will be sometime in Q2, Q3. Okay, okay. So, sir, this is related to our original plan of achieving 2,000 crores. So, as the time, uh, so I, I believe that management still stand by that word that uh, we will be, uh, we are trying to achieve 2,000 crores of top line. So, uh, uh, is it correct, sir? We stand by our best word. See, the last financial year we achieved a growth of 43%. This year we should be able to. We're looking at close to 20% plus in terms of growth. So cumulatively, we are at about CAGR in the last two years about 30%. So we need to get to about 35-36% on a five-year journey to get to the you know vision that we are. So the more importantly, what I would like to share with you for the company, it has been to get to onto a very aggressive growth path. I think that that point has been achieved in terms of achieving year-on-year -year growth. So, and the focus will continue and more and more products and projects which we have started earlier is going to come in line in FY23 and FY24. So, those revenues have not been realized yet. So, in the next financial year, those things should be coming through and uh, we, are, we are positive on chasing down this vision. That we have set so, during this journey, do we see any, uh, you know, that any revolutionary product uh, for this farming segment or uh, the small farm equipment uh, segment, or uh, there will be some uh, natural sunset uh, of some product? So we have uh, of the tailors or something like that. If uh, my earlier questioner asked that uh, M and M is launching something to replace the power tiller. So do we see any uh, change in product mix or any any strategy, any change in strategy that we may have to implement or something like that? See, some uh, there are, like I have shared earlier with you, we are looking at uh, four or five strategies in terms of, uh, uh, you know, gunning for this growth. I will repeat what I have said before. One is ensuring that the power tiller business is, uh, you know, converted to a small farm mechanization business. So power tiller plus plus. Secondly, we are looking at ensuring capacity utilization for our higher horsepower tractor and uh, selling those volumes. Third is chasing of leadership in the compact tractor segment and sustaining it. That is the third one. Fourth, uh, what we have said is we will be getting into precision implements, which we are doing. Fifth is what we have said is we will look at rural distribution opportunities. Very soon we will be coming to you and telling you uh, probably in quarter one of next year that we are getting into rural distribution and I will be able to share more details on that with you in quarter one. And uh, the last one is we said we will invest in technology and future innovation. So you have seen us going and investing in electric tractor technology and uh, uh, Zimino in the makers of uh, Monarch tractor for which we are in talks with them and we have already supplied the power train to them. Okay. Okay, great sir. Uh, sir. last question is on the export. How do you see export for coming in? Yeah, export is doing quite well for us. Uh, we are growing 
about 140% plus in on the export front in this current year and uh, we have been able to go into the countries which we wanted to go into like eastern europe i told you earlier that we will be entering which we have done this year and we said we will expand in africa so we have been able to create a network in west africa and southern africa so we are yet to enter the eastern african part which very soon we should be able to okay okay so all the best sir thank you very much thank you thank you anyone who would like to ask a question you may press star and 1 The next question is from the line of Anand Srinivasan. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question again, sir. I just wanted to ask about what is the capex for this year and next year? Yeah, capex will be around forty-five crores for this year and next year. The plan is in progress. Uh, probably the next call, I will be able to share more details with you. Sure, and uh, I just wanted to know if there are any subscription-based models that can be explored. I just wanted to know how. technology can disrupt you know the business model that is existing currently because there are also um, some players who are working on you know tractor for hire or something like that so are there any opportunities you see on this side uh we have operated custom hiring service centers and uh, the business model has not proven to be quite profitable however i think uh, what you said is so many things are emerging and we are closely watching it one of the latest thing that is emerging is drone as a service so these are the things that we are watching closely and uh, the company will be taking steps to be in the forefront of emerging technologies especially for the small farmer okay okay sir thank you sir this all button okay thank you the next question is from the line of sonal gupta from lnt mutual fund please go ahead Yeah, hi. So thanks for the follow-up question. No, so I just uh, wanted to understand on the precision implements we mentioned. You started rotor waiters. Uh, I mean, like, uh, what all implements are you looking at? I mean, uh, and by when do you have expect to have a complete portfolio? Yeah, so it will be a continuous journey. So right now we have started with rotor waiters. Second thing we are working on currently is sprayers, and uh, we are also looking at uh, certain. Uh, components like tines that go into uh, tillers and rotavators so we are in talks multiple talks with them and i think this journey will continue there is no uh, you know complete portfolio kind of situation that we are looking at what we are seeing is wherever the opportunity is now for example like i was just uh, telling the previous caller one thing that is emerging is uh, drones now so we would be looking at it, it as well so we will be working on it good and uh, i mean like are there any other uh, like uh, plain vanilla things like we are seeing now a lot of oems getting into i mean just from other sec- segments like getting into the usual stuff like even lubricants and all they are selling through the network as spare as part of their spare part business so yeah. uh, i mean so are we doing at, uh, yeah yeah we are definitely doing that i spoke about the rural distribution that we want to do so we are building a completely digitally enabled funnel so i i i will share more details with all of you once we have completely get it off the ground and going right now a lot of work is happening on that front and uh, probably in the coming quarters i will be able to share more details with all of you got it so and uh, this one we uh, precision implements are these largely again cash and carry or there is a element of finance everything is like cash that? and carry everything is cash and carry at least to the channel partners we are on cash and carry model only right no i am understand uh, like for the end customer uh, i mean like you launched this dash cutter scheme where you are giving it on a emi basis so i would imagine that yeah, don't a, a lot of okay, no for tractors and implements there is finance available so many of these implements are financed by the customer right the real issue of finance is in the small farm machinery segment which is the 
power tiller, power weeder, brush cutter space. Got it. Got it, sir. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Sapnis from Nine Rivers Capital. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, the realize the average realizations for tractors have uh, gone up sharply. What do you uh, attribute this to? Average real. Of course, we have had a price increase in the uh, in the year uh, due to com continuous commodity inflation. That definitely has happened. And second is there is also a shift towards higher horsepower sales. Uh, our even in our compact segment, larger number of 27 horsepower is selling compared to 18 horsepower. 30 horsepower is another compact tractor which has started selling. Then of course we our journey into higher horsepower space, which is the 45 HP and 50 HP segments that come at a come at a higher uh, price. So from all these perspectives, of course, if you compare the average realization with uh, previous years, definitely you will see that it has gone up. So mix of uh, mix change and the price hikes. Product mix and inflation, yeah, both. Got it, got it. On the uh, export front, you said you will grow this year 40% above last year, right? Is that... Uh, 140%. 140%. So last year you did yeah. about 650 volumes that we grew by. 140%. Correct. And which geographies uh, is this primarily dri driven by? I mean, is this. Europe, primarily? Europe, Europe primarily, I would say. Africa, we have just entered. We are, we are getting good growth there, but the base is small. Got it. And uh, you're pl planning to leverage the Zeta or supply chain in Western Europe. Is that also. In the Right now we are not doing it, but uh, in the future, yes, uh, we will be doing it. Not necessarily for Europe, because Europe we have a very good network, but the other continents like Latin America, we are looking and talking to them currently. Got it. Got it. And if you could just give me the dealer count on uh, tailors and tractors. Both. Uh, dealers, we are at uh, 554 five, and uh, uh, tractors, we are at 325. Great. Uh, thanks a lot. That's all from my side. We, we should look for the next one. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anand Srinivasan. Please go ahead. I just wanted to follow back on that uh, drone. Have you applied for the drone PLI? Do we, are we eligible for that? PLI, no, but uh, we are looking at drones as an opportunity. We are just, I mean, we have just begun the studies on that. We are working on it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devanshu Sambat from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the follow-up. Uh, so a few questions. Um, so can you give a bit of an update on what's happening on the tie-up with Hubert and the power wheeler side? Yeah, power weeder side, uh, the progress is good. The volumes is growing. Uh, however, no other modality improvements have happened because of COVID. I, we traveled to France. We had a discussion. Uh, Pubert is also expected to come to India. However, due to COVID, those things have not progressed. Okay, okay. Uh, so um, it's, it's uh, safe to assume that FY23 may we should uh, be able to uh, first half. Yes, something yes. That we, should we are be definitely able. working on it in an unpredictable environment. So okay. we are definitely working on that. Yeah. Sure. And uh, uh, a question for the MD, uh, if, if he chooses to answer. So can you talk a bit about the challenges that we are facing? You know, not from a macro environment, but from within, right? Uh, I mean, I, I did, there has been a bit of manage, senior management attention that I have read some news uh, and, uh, you know, there have also a little bit of a uh, channel check that I did. I got to know that the, the tractor oil leakages issues are still, uh, the complaints of that still are coming around. So, uh, you know, if you can comment a bit on that and how we are looking at addressing these issues. On the management front, uh we have not had any serious issues. Yes, we've had uh, 
one senior person leading us and uh, that's been taken care of. We have uh, enough of management uh, depth to handle that that issue. We don't see any uh, any problem on that. On the tractor front, you said leakage issues. We've overcome all the issues on the tractors of now. Uh, our tractors, uh, the uh, last uh, quarter, I'd say the tractors that have gone out do not have leakage issues pertaining to models which had gone out earlier, possibly. Okay, okay. So, so you're saying? I, I'd like to just, I'd like to just add on to what MD just said. You know, I'm very happy to say that the company has begun a TPM journey, and we just had the first audit, and uh, we actually got a uh, you know exemplary award on the quality front, and that too, non less than from the IMXI, and the companies. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so the company's objective to, uh, you know, go on the journey and look at even Deming at a later stage, it continues. So definitely a lot of work has happened in the last two to three years. And uh, I mean, the problems you spoke about are no more there. Okay, okay, that's great to hear. Uh, and when it comes to, you know, R&D and innovation, you know, if you can give me an honest assessment, do you think we are self-sufficient or are we, you know, we need the help of uh, tech, tech partners, uh, and, you know, to sort of keep up with a lot of uh, startups and, you know, some of the larger names also are, are upping the R&D game from what I've been reading. So, so your take on that in terms of how we are approaching this and, you know, to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah, so definitely innovation is going to be a critical part of our journey. So I'm very happy to share with you this year, CII is awarded as us, uh, BST, as one of the most uh, 25 topmost innovative organizations in the country. So uh, we have been doing a lot of innovations, and especially in the small farm uh, mechanization space. And that journey will continue. And we will continue to partner, especially for technology. As you know, we have partnered with uh, uh, Zitor. Similarly, we are working together with Monarch for electric and uh, autonomous tractors. So those things will continue. Innovation definitely, uh, I mean, there are several projects that are underway looking at innovations that needs to be done, especially in the small farm mechanization space. And the uh, last question from my side is uh, any update on the line parcel sale and if not then what is the reason that this is getting delayed, you know, given that uh, the land value and the real estate cycle news are generally quite uh, favorable right now. So, See, I, I like I kept on saying that land we are not looking at immediately, but like I've said before, we will definitely unlock the value of this land, but the critical factor is uh, you know, the company is looking for opportunities of growth and uh, we will need cash at some point in time. And also, you know very well that, you know, the real estate, this is not the best time to uh, get into a commercial deal on a real estate uh, at this point in time. But definitely, we will be unlocking the value. Nothing decided at this point in time. Sure, sure. Thank you. And wishing the team all the very best. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Marshall, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, this, uh, I think the month of August or something, there was a press release that regarding the agreement signed with the Jimeno for this electric uh, tractor. So if you can just spell out where do we stand on this one, number one. Okay. So Zimeno, we, are, we have supplied tractors to them. Uh, they are in the process of development, testing, there is a huge regulatory requirement in the US, so there is a lot of testing needs to be done. In the coming financial year, the Monarch, that is Zimino Inc., is expecting to launch those tractors in the US market. So for those tractors, the powertrain will go from us in India. So it means we will see some production during Q4 or the next year, or the Q1 next year? Next year, next year. Most likely Q3, Q4 of next year. Okay. And second thing, uh, we have receivables of 82 crores in our balance sheet. So whether all those receivables are less than six months or something older, which may not be realizable? Uh, 
there are subsidy outstanding which is greater than 6 months uh, which a company has provisioned for so that is what is greater than 6 months so the regular uh, uh, payments uh, or the regular receivables are the aging is in a comfortable zone uh, so but like why uh, why we have to make the provision for the subsidy if it is a uh, like if the government has to give some subsidy as per the policy or, or the notification we should get it isn't it we should get it but we are following the credit policy set by the company whether it is subsidy or not we have ah, provided okay, okay that is fine yeah. that is fine that is fine okay okay yeah. but like otherwise it, uh, otherwise it's receivable yes the okay. government the government the, and it is not only us the entire industry has to get money from the andhra pradesh government okay all right okay jai sri ram jai sri ram thank you As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Namalai Jayraj for closing comments. Yeah, uh, we thank all the participants. We thank VC Tillis Management for taking time out for the call. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Badli Mala and Karani Securities India Private Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.